Your faith will make you whole again. Your faith will cause your pain to end. Believe that you take healing in, and your faith will make you whole again. the healing power of God in your life. When you take healing, take it by faith. Believe that Jesus already bore your sicknesses and your sin and your shame on the cross on his body for you. And you can receive it by faith. I love that line in this song, your faith will make you whole. It's by standing on the promises of God with unwavering faith, believing that it is God's will for you to be healed. See, that's the first step. You need to believe that it is His will to heal you, that He is not the one who is plaguing you with sickness. He has come, Jesus has come to heal you, to set you free from the torment of the enemy. Yes. It's God's will for you to be healed. That's right. Then that should bring you so much of hope to know that it's God's will to heal you and to bring you hope in your life. Yes. And in fact, that's what we're going to talk about today is that your faith will make you whole. The mm. song that we were singing actually comes from the scripture and the places where Jesus tells people, your faith will make you whole, or your faith has made you whole. And many of them were coming to Jesus and they were coming with all kinds of you know, problems and sicknesses and diseases. But Jesus always, you know, when, when they used their faith, Jesus told them, it is your faith because you believe that you would receive it. Your faith is what has made you whole. Amen. And last time we were talking about um, the name of Jesus and the power and authority that we have in that name. And we saw how you can use that power and authority against sickness and disease mm. and uh, command it to leave because yeah. at the name of Jesus there is power. Yeah, and that power and authority, Jesus didn't just give it to his disciples alone, although he was talking to them at the time. Mm. But he also mentioned that whoever believes in me, he said in John 14, 12, whoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. What works did Jesus do? 
He went around setting people free, healing people, delivering people, and loving people, forgiving people of sins. Whatever works I do, you can do also. And he also said in that verse, in John 14, 12, and greater works than these shall you do also. Because we have received the power of the Holy Spirit after Jesus died on the cross and He rose again, we have received the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So we, when we believe in the name of Jesus and in, in Jesus Himself, when we believe in Him, we can do what Jesus did and we can experience victory in our lives. Yeah, that's and, very important. Um, another scripture I was just thinking about in Mark 16 also, you know, just so that you know that Jesus was not just talking to His disciples. In Mark 16, He says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then He said, He that believes shall do the very works that I do. He said, He that believes shall be saved. Let me just read that quickly from Mark 16. He that believes in Me and is baptized shall go around and do what? Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Number one, you shall receive the salvation of God. You shall be saved. Yeah. And number, uh, verse 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Wow, that's quite a lot. When you believe in Jesus, you can do the very works that Jesus did. Yeah. You can be saved, you can be set free. You can even go around laying your hands on people who are sick and God's healing power will heal them. Yeah, that's very important to know because mm. um, the power and authority that you've received through yeah. by the name of Jesus should not just lie dormant on the inside of you. Amen. You ought to use that power and authority because sometimes we, we have received Jesus but we don't know to the extent what it really means. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're showing you one side of what it really means to receive the name of Jesus. And that is to use your power and authority against sickness and disease. Yeah. It's a very powerful thing. You know, this is not just something only for Jesus. Like we just read in Mark, Jesus is talking to us as believers that we can use the power and authority that He's given us. You know, um, last time we were talking on the story of how the centurion, he he used his, um, he, he understood what authority was, you know, as a, as, a, as a man of authority and also being under authority, he knew what the importance of authority is, mm. you know, commanding people to do things and they should do it. Yeah. And he applied that same thing to the area of healing. Yeah. He just, he knew it. He said, Jesus, if you speak the word, my servant, he will be healed and made whole. Mm. Yeah, the servant yeah. was sick and paralyzed and couldn't walk. Mm. And so, he came running to Jesus and he said, if you speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. Yeah. yeah. He believed the word of Jesus. He believed the word. He probably heard about the healing power of Jesus and he mostly he knew authority. Mm. And that's what Jesus was amazed by. That's why he said, um, great is your faith, yeah. for you have believed without even seeing. And you know, there's another amazing story in, in the Bible where we're not going to go into detail about it, but Jesus, the way he speaks, he uses authority in another area. Now we've seen how he uses it against sickness and disease, mm -hmm. but also he used it against the storms of life. Yeah. And um, particularly, it was a storm that was trying to hinder them when they were in the boat. Yeah. And Jesus had, storm. yeah, this whole story can be found in the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 22 through mm -hmm. 25. Jesus had just told his disciples that we're going over to the other side. And, um, you know, he didn't say anything about any situation happening in the middle. He just said, we are going to take the boat and go to the other side. Mm. And while they were on the middle of the journey, we see that there was a storm ahead. And um, the boat, you know, was having so tossed. much of water, was tossed to and fro. And uh, water had just come into the boat. Mm. And the disciples were panicking. But you know what Jesus was doing at this moment? He was asleep. Yeah. He was fast asleep. He was not worried about anything. Hmm. He was just asleep. In fact, it says the disciples, they had to wake him up from his sleep. You know, just to think, if you are in a boat and there's storms all around you, that's automatically going to make you wake up. But here we see the disciples had to wake Jesus up because he was fast asleep. Yeah. I mean, the boat turned and tossed, but he still didn't get up. That's right. That shows how much of peace he was at. And moreover, he wasn't worried about anything. Even in the middle of a storm, mm. he was at peace and he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried, he was just at peace. That is the amazing thing I see about Jesus. 
he was never worried about anything he knew the power and authority that he had mm. and you know what it says that when the disciples they woke him up and they said jesus you know we are in the middle of a storm here and we are already going to die what are we going to do jesus straight away just woke up mm. and he rebuked that storm mm. and he rebuked it mm. so whatever storm in your life it may it may not be in a boat but you may be facing a storm of fear and you will be facing storms of worry and sickness and all that mm. well if you have the name of jesus you can command that storm to cease and command it to leave in the name of jesus mm. and it should leave your faith will make you whole again we're talking about the faith of god and how you can be whole in your entire body when you believe in the finished work of jesus when you believe that jesus has already paid the price for your sin sickness and your sin uh, sin sickness and your poverty jesus has redeemed you from the curse and by believing in that you can be whole in your entire life that's right you can be um, also a person who's going to have a expectancy for living life yeah and that's important having an expectant attitude in life right. because uh, if you just live every day waking up just see what the day brings then we're expecting life to determine you know what's going to happen to us but you know what when you have received jesus into your life and the power and authority you can determine the direction of your life you can determine jesus teaches all in his teachings he shows us so many places on that and particularly last time we saw on how we you know jesus he uh, we we just spoke a little bit about how you know in the storms how he woke up in peace and just rebuked that wind and wave yeah and that the way it applies to our life is in our life there can be storms mm. you know of sickness and of fear and all these things yeah we can use our authority and command those things mm. to leave and so submit to the name of Jesus yeah the thing about storms of life the hindrances that come into your way they don't come to strengthen you or to mm. build you up if you see in the natural you don't find a storm coming to build people up or coming to help them the storm comes to destroy to yeah. tear people's lives apart that's right to break everything and to bring destruction really and those are the effects of a storm so storms of life also talking about the problems in your life the trials the tests that you encounter they don't come to strengthen your faith contrary to that they come to weaken your faith mm. and they come to test your faith So if you are strong in the Lord and if you are strong in faith if you have built your life upon the word of God you will be able to overcome that storm. Yeah. You know when when the disciples they were panicking in the boat and they were afraid they didn't know what to do when Jesus was asleep in the boat you know Jesus woke up he rebuked the storm but he also turned to the disciples and he told them where is your faith? You know why were you so fearful? Oh you have little faith. Yeah. You know and that word little if you see it uh, relates to small in qu- uh, small in duration or short in duration. Jesus was not necessarily saying your little faith is because you know your faith is not yet developed or you haven't grown you're not been very mature in your faith but what he referred to was you were operating in faith while you believed in me mm. but then you you know you stop believing in me you doubted you quit and that's why he called it little faith yeah and so remember we talked about jesus uh, told the centurion great is your faith mm. and then here he turns around and tells the disciples oh you have little faith so jesus wasn't saying the centurion was better than you or anything he was just saying the duration of your faith yeah so keep on operating by faith when you stop operating by faith and you start operating in worry and fear then it's called little faith yeah but you don't want to be like that you yeah. want to continue to be steadfast in your faith that's right and today we're going to also see about how your faith can bring mm. hope into your life and bring you a future and particularly we're going to see this story in the book of mark chapter 5 about a woman how who believed that she could change her future right just by changing what she believed Mm. And let's go to the book of Mark chapter 5. We're going to read a few verses from there. Mm. But in this story, we see that there was a woman who was um, having an issue of blood for 12 years. And she had gone to many doctors and physicians and nobody could, you know, cure her. In fact, it says she spent all that she had and uh, she was not better, but she was actually worse. And uh, we see that um she somehow heard of Jesus. You know, Jesus healing people. and as soon as she heard of Jesus this is what it says about her 
in the book of Mark chapter 5 we're going to go to verse 27 it says when she, this woman when she heard of Jesus she came in the press behind and touched his garment you know it was really a crowded place and she knew she couldn't go there with her condition but somehow she knew she had to go and get her healing and um, but this is what happened before she got her healing this is what she said she said if I may touch his clothes I shall be whole that's what she says in verse 28 if I may just touch his clothes I shall be whole Hmm. And so she went behind Jesus and somehow got herself through and went and touched his clothes and she was made whole. Hmm. And uh, Jesus, now in verse 30, he recognized that something had happened. Somebody had got healed. And he looks around and he says in verse 30, the last part, he says, who touched my clothes? And then the people, the disciples all look at Jesus and they say, well, can't you see people are all touching you? And Jesus said, no, 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 I feel it. You know, there's virtue gone out of me. You know, that's what he says there. And in verse 30, now the woman is afraid. And so somehow she comes behind Jesus and she runs and she says, it was me in verse 34. Or she comes and tells him all the truth in verse 33. Hmm. And Jesus answers and tells the woman in verse 34, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Right. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. That's what we were singing about earlier. Your faith can make you whole. Hmm. Now, Let's see what the real essence of this story is. This woman, she, when she heard of Jesus, she just started changing what she believed about herself, about her condition. Mm. She believed, she, faith came into her as soon as she heard of Jesus. You know, she started to say, if I just touch his clothes, I will be whole. I don't have to live like this all my life, in other words, she was saying. If I just go and touch him, I'm going to be well. Mm. And she just changed her future by changing what she believed. Yeah, her confession of faith <clears throat> was consistent. Yeah. She kept saying, you know, she had tried so many things. She went to doctors and, you know, they couldn't help cure her. So she, she was literally in a hopeless situation. Mm. And so she would have given up, mm. but she heard of Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's, that's amazing. You may have heard of Jesus and his healing power in you. Mm. And don't stop there. Keep running to Him. And when you come to Him, say, Lord, I believe that yeah. you are able to he uh, heal me. Yeah. And so this lady, she believed. And it's amazing that she kept saying within herself, she, that truth that she kept saying changed her life. Yeah. It changed her future. If she would have just said, well, I'm, in, I'm hopeless now. There's no point of me living. You know, I might as well just give up and die. Because she's been suffering for 12 years. Yeah. So when you've been in a condition like that for a long mm -hmm. time, it should, you know, take all the hope out of you yeah but even in that condition somehow somewhere she heard of Jesus yeah and she immediately was able to change her future by changing what she believed mm. yeah. faith came into her and she started believing you know mm. if I touch his clothes I will be whole you yeah. know that word whole is interesting it means restore back to health it means to be rescued to be delivered to be healed and to be made well she believed that she could be restored back to her health hmm. all by changing what she believed yeah and when you hear words of faith that should change what you believe hmm. you know she changed her future and just by changing what she believed that's important for you hmm. to remember maybe you're in a condition where you just feel like it's hopeless and there's no hope in your life well believe this today in jeremiah 29 11 god says that he has a hope and a future for you Yes. And another place, another meaning of that is also he has an expected end for you. Amen. You know, God has good plans for you. He put you on this earth to, to have an expected end for your life. But mm -hmm. the way you're going to actually enjoy this is by putting faith into you. Because yeah. just like this woman, she was able to enjoy a new future just by changing what she believed. Yeah. And she was able to have a hope in her life. And faith is actually what pleases God. Faith mm. is what moves God. If you see in the Bible, there was another man who received his... Healing. He was a blind man and he cried out aloud to Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me and save me. And the people around him, you know, they told him, just just keep quiet. You know, Jesus is not interested in yeah. healing you. But this man, it says, he cried out even more. He cried out louder and he said, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And, the, and it says in that verse that Jesus stood still. Jesus was moved by faith-filled words. This man, he no longer wanted to just sit and beg and be blind forever. 
He said, no, this is my day of healing. I'm going to be restored today. I'm going to be made well today. Jesus is going to heal me of my blindness. That's right. And so Jesus stopped in the way and he said, call that man here. And so he came and Jesus, uh, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, I want to see, I want to receive my sight. And so Jesus uh, prays for him and he, he, he receives his sight. And so what I'm amazed about this man is he, he presses in by faith. In Hebrews it says, Faith is what pleases God. In Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yeah. So if you believe for a miracle, you believe for a healing in your life or any kind of a blessing that you want in your life, you can only move the hand of God by faith, That's right. by believing what He said in His Word. That's right. You can believe today that God has a hope and a future for you. That's right. Just like, you know, this lady changed what she believed. She received faith and faith brought hope into her life and she had a future. So mm. you can change if you if you always thought that your future is going to be bad and it's going to be worse. Well, change what you believe and start saying, I'm a child of God. God has good plans for me and He said He has an expected end for me. Right. And hold on to those faith words and you will enjoy a bright and expected future in your life. So remember, your faith is what's going to make you whole again. Mm.